Amen. Praise the Lord for the lyrics of that song. Praise the Lord that salvation is available to whosoever that will repent and believe. And uh, it's really sad that some people don't believe that. And they believe that only some are, chose, some are chosen and Christ died only for some. And not whosoever when the Bible is very clear. I, I, remember, uh, I remember asking someone, a Calvinist, what kind of a sad life he will live if he realized that his son or daughter is not uh, one of the chosen. And I told him, how can you uh, go on living your life knowing that, uh, some, that whatever you do, your kids uh, will just go to hell eventually. And uh, I don't know, uh, their answer is, uh, just have to accept it as the will of God. Sounds very spiritual, but unscriptural. So uh, we praise the Lord that we believe that whosoever believeth in Him will, should not perish but have everlasting life. And praise the Lord for that. And this afternoon, um, we'll, we'll be at 2 Corinthians, of, uh, of course. We'll finish the last part of, last part of uh, chapter 11. So if I may ask everyone to stand, let's read verses 16 until 33. Okay, um, I'll, I'll read it and follow it uh, silently uh, in your Bibles. <coughs> Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 16, it says here, I say again, let no man think me a fool. If otherwise, yet as a fool receive me, that I may boast myself a little. That which I speak, I speak it not after the Lord, but as it were foolishly in this confidence of boasting. Seeing that many glory after the flesh, I will glory also. For ye suffer fools gladly, seeing yourselves are wise. For ye suffer if a man bring you into bondage, if a man devour you, if a man take care of you, if a man exalteth himself, if a man smite you on the face. I speak as concerning reproach as though we had been weak. Howbeit wherein soever any is bold, I speak foolishly. I am bold also. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they the ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. In labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, in deaths oft of the Jews five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods, once was I stoned, thrice I suffered shipwreck, a night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeyings often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by my own countrymen, in perils by my heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among the false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and in thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. Beside those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. Who is weak? Am I am not weak. Who is offended? Am I burn not? If I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern mine infirmities. The God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is blessed forevermore, knoweth that I lie not. In Damascus, the governor under Aretas, the king, kept the city of the, uh, the Damascens with garrisons, desirous to apprehend me, and through a window in a basket was I let down by the wall and escaped his hands. Let's go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for the reading of your word. Thank you for the availability, dear Lord, of your word, and that we can look into it, dig deep, and see principles that we can apply. I pray, Lord, that you bless each and everyone that are here. I pray that um, we will see what Apostle Paul is talking about. We will see uh, what kind of uh, minister he is, and that we are going to come to appreciate the true ministers of God and come and, and be uh, helped by the scriptures to, uh, to avoid uh, uh, false ministers of God. I pray, Lord, that you, you help me as I speak. May you bring, uh, 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 w give me wisdom and uh, knowledge and remind me of the things that I have uh, studied so that I'll be able to share it this afternoon. I pray, Lord, that uh, we will all be focused on your word and that we will, only, we will only have your glory in mind and that we will let the Holy Spirit work freely in our midst. For these things, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So I apologize if, if uh, there will be some uh, song uh, lyrics uh, during my preaching because last night while I was preparing this, there was a concert beside our house 
and uh, there's this uh, Hotel California in Khmer, and uh, all of these uh, songs. And what I was always I was disturbed, especially if I know the song, I will pause and sing along and then <laughs> study again. So and I'm just joking. Uh, it was a really difficult night, but uh, praise the Lord for the opportunity to study His Word. And um, anyway, I, I don't. Uh, this this message can easily be two two messages in one. But as you know me, I speak so fast. So please bear with me. I I, I, I want to finish this uh, this afternoon and as fast as as fast as I can, but not. Uh, okay, so it says here again. Uh, we'll start at verse number 16. Um, uh, just a little bit of of review. Last uh, time we have studied about Paul's uh, boasting, Paul's uh, folly, and this is a continuation of it. But then um, Paul here starts to use a lot of uh, sarcasm, and now he's uh, giving us. Uh, his credentials as uh, a minister of God. And he says that, para bang uh, talagang uh, sabaya na to, sabi ni Paul. Uh, yabangan na, na din lang, eto na, magayabang na ako. Uh, and, and this is very, again, it's very uncharacteristic of the Apostle Paul. In verse 16, he says here, and the first point, we see here that Paul qualifies his boasting in verse 16 and 17. It says here, I say again, let no man think me a fool. If otherwise, yet as a fool receive me, that I may boast myself a little so uh, it's like he's repeating verse number one if you're going uh, if you could if we go back quickly to verse number one it says here that would to God you could bear with me a little my folly and indeed bear with me so it's the same thing that he said in verse 16 because he's gonna take his uh, folly to another level to another gear so he says that I say again let no man think me a fool okay if otherwise yet as a fool receive me that I may boast myself a little Okay, in uh, the, uh, what Paul is doing here is uh, he realized that there is really no other way. In Proverbs chapter 26, verse 4 and 5, it says here, Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest thou also be like unto him. Verse 5 says, Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceit. There, is, there are times that you, you don't have to answer a fool. Why? Because they're bringing you down to their level. But there are also times that you have to answer a fool so that they will, uh, uh, they will be ashamed of what they're saying. So now Paul is applying verse 5. He has chosen to apply verse 4 many, many, many times because he doesn't want to go down to that level. And he knows that he's not called to boast. He's not called to preach or to say anything about himself. He's called to only preach about Christ. But now he, only, he now realizes that there's no other way have to go down to their level and, 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 and so that they will realize what, 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 what they're really doing. Okay, in verse number 17 here says, That which I speak, I speak it not after the Lord, but as it were foolishly in this confidence of boasting. He's making it clear that this is not what the Lord really called me to do. This is not of the Lord. Because there's, in the Lord, there's really no, no, no place of pride. There's really no pr place of <coughs> boasting. And what, one thing I want you guys to realize, and I know I've emphasized a little bit last week about this, that for Paul, as much as it's possible, you should never boast of anything about yourself. As much as poss possible. He, he, he's making us realize in this chapter 11 how hard it is for him to boast. Gaano kahirap sa kanyang magyabang? Medyo nakaka-relate ako kay Paul eh. Mahirap po talagang magyabang. Sabi niya, para sa akin, ang hirap. Napaka-humble kong tao. Hindi niya sinasabing humble ako in the spirit of boasting as well. Because that's the truth. He knows that uh, I have nothing to boast of myself. Kung payabangan lang, meron akong credentials, meron akong kaya, meron akong alam, na may ibubuga ako. But I'm not called to do that. Since he was saved, he's realized that it's all about the glory of the Lord. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 5, he says, For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. So this chapter is in direct contradiction to what he's saying to verse 4 and 5, but only because circumstances really is calling for it. And it's not, and we have to realize that reading this, I, I have heard a pastor before saying that si Paul nga nagyabang eh. You know, this is, kung, kung babasahin mo talaga, hiyang-hiya nga si Paul sa ginawa niya. Hiyang-hiya siya sa gagawin niya. He, he repeats it almost every six, seven verses. He always says that, okay, I'm speaking as a fool, 
I'm reminding you, I'm speaking as a fool. This is not good. Parabang, don't try this at home. Okay, I just have to do this. I really have to do this. But don't do what I'm doing. Kaya hindi natin pwedeng gamitin itong chapter na to na ako din magyayabang si Paul nga. Yabang eh. Basahin mo nga yung chapter 11, sobrang yabang ni Paul, of course. But we will see later kung ano yung difference ng pagyayabang niya sa pagyayabang nila. Uh, meron bang kailangan ba mag-English? No. And I think the homeboys, I will explain that to you later. Okay? Uh, okay, so he said that that which I speak, I speak it not after the Lord. Let's make that clear. But as it were foolishly in this confidence boasting. Let us realize that if we are to be like Christ or if we are to really, uh, if we really want to, to live the Christian life correctly, boasting should not be a part of our life. You know, because Paul calls us to be like Christ and he knows that this is not of the Lord. This is not being Christ-like at all. Uh, big boasting. What I'm, what I'm about to do is not being Christ-like at all. John 3.30 says, He must increase and I must decrease. The same thing when Paul says that, uh, but he that glorieth in, in, in the previous chapter, let him glory in the Lord. That is what he really is. That is what he really believes. Okay? And I cannot emphasize this enough, that what Paul is about to do is not something that is encouraged for us to do. Which is not encouraging us to do this. It's just showing us what, how, how carnal these people are and how this circumstance is calling for it. And the challenge here is, I hope and I pray that our church will not resort into that in any way or form. That uh, it will not happen in our church that someday that we are going to have a leader that is really um, leading us in, in a way that we know that it's not the will of God. Why? It can happen to us if the members has has gone so far away from the word of God. It can happen to us. That's why uh, this is what's happening here now. After Paul says that, here in verses 18 to 23, first part of 23, he's now telling them what these false ministers are doing. And, and, it's, and it's, no, uh, it's no secret sa atin. Because we have the Bible, we know the marks of a false minister. And here in verse 18 to 23, he's telling them what they are. He says here, uh, um, in verse 18, seeing, says here, Seeing that many glory after the flesh, I will glory also. Okay, so now he's making it clear that these people are glorying after the flesh. Okay, it's not after the Lord. I will glory also. I'll do the same. For ye suffer fools gladly, seeing you yourselves are wise. Now, this is the first dose of sarcasm that he's giving them. Eh, eh kung tinitiis nyo naman itong mga mayabang na to, kasi magagaling kayo eh. It's very sarcastic. And if Paul is going to preach in our time today, no one's going to like him. It's very sarcastic. Uh, he's, he's, re he's really straight to the point. He's telling them, eh, since you are wise, magagaling naman kayo, matatalino naman kayo, at nakita ko naman na dahil dyan sa katalinuhan nyo, eh, you're suffering these people, let me do the same thing. Maybe, ito talagang effective sa inyo. Sige, ito yung gagawin ko. This is what, this, this is what uh, uh, Paul is saying in verse 20. He says, for if ye suffer, if a man bring you into bondage, if a man devour you, if a man take of you, if a man exalt himself, if a man smite you in the face. Now, these are five things na may kita natin. Ano yung ugali ng isang false minister? First thing here, sabi niya dito, For if ye suffer, suffer, if a man bring you into bondage. Now, these false ministers are bringing God's people into bondage. Whether it be talking about the law na, na binabalik nila yung Old Testament old laws na kailangan yung sundin-sundin because we, we if we will uh, read later verse number 22 these people are Jews okay and remember the church at Corinth are composed of Gentiles alam natin kung an ano yung difference ng mga yan anong tingin ng mga Hudyo sa Gentiles especially these people are not saved and they still have that pride as Jews so now he says that they're bringing them into bondage it's either that they're bringing them into bondage putting the law of uh, giving the law to them or maybe based on their authority yung sa kanilang pagiging authoritarian or sa pagiging legalistic nila nakukulong ang mga taga Corinth and we can see that in our time today na pinalaya na tayo ng Panginoon sa bondage of sin yet nilagay tayo ng Panginoon sa simbahan to be in bondage under a, 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 a very um, mapangabuso na mga pastor you know this, uh, as, as, as uh, believers we have been freed the Bible says that Christ has set us free not to be in bondage again by a human being. It says here in Romans chapter 6, verse 17 to 23, But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart 
that, that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Verse 18, being that made free from sin, ye became servants of righteousness. We are free, the Bible says. Now, um, we are not free to do what we want. When we were not saved, we were under the bondage of sin. We do what our flesh wants. We do what sin wants. We do what the devil wants. We do what those bad things. But God said, you are now free. You are saved, you are now free. But not free on your own. Not free to do what you want. But free to what? To be servants of righteousness. Amen. That means, malaya na tayong maglingkod sa Panginoon. Malaya na tayong sumunod sa Panginoon. Because before, when we were trying to obey God, when we were trying to do good works, when we were unsaved and trying to do good works, kasalanan pa rin yun eh. The still sin. Why? Because we're doing it under our own strength, under our own, uh, uh, under our own righteousness, under what we think is right. But now that Christ has set you free from that, you are now free to serve God. Verse 19, I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members, servants to uncleanness and to iniquity, unto iniquity, even so now, yield your members, servants to righteousness unto holiness. Kaya nga po mahalaga na maintindihan natin na nung pag sinabi ng Bible na tayo ay mga malaya na, ibig sabihin nung pumapasok pa rin tayo under or are yielding ourselves under the will of God. Anlang doon, doon lang ang ating freedom. Hindi po lumalayo doon. Kaya po mahalaga yung repentance. Kaya hindi po natin pwedeng tanggalin ang repentance sa salvation. Why? You are not turning, just turning, merely turning your back from sin. No. But you are following after something else. Hindi lang basta na, hindi lang bang nasa bandage na ako ng sin, pinalaya na ako ng Panginoon, I'm free to do what I want. It's, that's not what it means. Repentance means you're turning your back from sin, you're turning your back from the bondage of sin, but you are surrendering yourself to the Lord. Sabi ng verse, you are yield your members, servants to what? Righteousness and to holiness. Kaya tayo nilitas ng Panginoon to serve God, not to serve people. Okay? For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are not ashamed? For the end of those things is death. Kaya nga yung mga ginagawa natin dati, that will, is what going to lead you to death and to hell. But now being made free from sin, again, and become what? Servants to God. Okay, very important. He could not emphasize this enough. Very clear. Ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Ito po yung nakakalungkot. God has freed us from sin. God has freed us from the, from the, uh, 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 tag dito sa, uh, uh, pamamalakad ng mundo na ito. We're free from all that. We, have na, we now have the choice to say no to sin. We now have the choice to serve God. But people instead go to church and go to, uh, go to uh, the body of, body of Christ and fellowship with believers following men. Para bang pinalaya ka na, magpapakulong ka pa sa tao. Pinalaya ka na, magpapauto ka pa sa mga false ministers. And this is very hard. Later on, we we're going to see kung bakit, kung bakit ba nangyayari ito. Because there are people who love authority. Na hindi sila, hindi sa kanila sapat na nakakapag-preach sila, nakatayo sila sa likod ng pulpito, na pinagkatiwala sa kanila ang mga uh, anak ng Panginoon. Hindi sapat sa kanila. Gusto nila gawin ng mga taong ito kung yung gusto nila. Hindi yung gusto ng Panginoon. Para sa kanila, hindi satisfying Sasabihin ko lang gusto ng Panginoon, gagawin nila gusto ng Panginoon. Hindi yan ang gusto ko. Meron akong gustong gawin sa simbahan na ito. Gusto ko itong mga tao na ito sundin yung gusto kong gawin. And they do that, mind you, using the Word of God. Kasi hindi ka naman basta-basta mauuto kung hindi sila gagamit ng Bible. Kaya din nilang gamitin yon, But hindi po natin namamalayan, kinukulong na naman nila tayo sa sarili nilang theology, sa sarili nilang kaisipan. Kaya nga po mga kapatid, we should not go from one bondage to another bondage. Kaya nga po, we are free only to serve God, not people. Now, these false ministers put you into bondage. Kaya pag mayroong mga ministers na hindi, lang, hindi sila legalistic, eh, we cannot say that they're legalistic. Kasi para sa akin, kung legalistic ka sa word of God, that's a good thing. But for them, they are legalistic in a, in a sense na gagawin mo dapat ang gusto ko. Pag hindi mo ginawa ang gusto ko, hindi ka sumusunod sa Panginoon. In that, in that sense. So now, these people are bringing the, the Corinthian people into bondage. Hindi lang ba sa'yo sabi pa dito, they devour. Okay? They love taking from the church. They love that. Hindi sila yung, mapag, hindi sila yung nagbibigay sa simbahan. Although they give offering, sabi, hindi yung buhay nila ang binibigay nila sa simbahan. Undo sila sa simbahan to get gain. Hindi lang sa devour, sabi dito, take of you. Kinukuhanan nila kayo. 
Kaya nga po, ingat tayo pagka may pastor na po, pera ang bukang bibig. Kasi ibig sabihin, pera ang nasa isip. Di po ba? Kasi naniniwala po ako sa, sa loob ng isang simbahan that is composed of true believers. Hindi mo na kailangan turuan pa paano magbigay. You don't have to. Why? Because it, the, the Lord will teach that to you. And the Lord, reading the Bible, you know that you have to support the ministry. You know that you have, you're being blessed by God to be a blessing to others. Kailangan na lang yan. Basahin your Bible. Explain what is, what is giving. Hindi mo na kailangan gumawa ng gimmick pa. Okay, magbibigay tayo. Uh, dapat ganitong amount. Dapat by the end of this time, ganito na yung naibigay mo. Dapat ganitong amount bibigay mo. Kayong mga teachers, kayong mataas ang suelo, dapat ganitong bibigay nyo. Hindi po dinidikta kung magkano ibibigay. Kaya pagka merong ministers na ganun, they are there to take of you. They are there to devour you. They love taking from the church. Is kung iisipin mo, wala naman talaga silang nabigay sa church eh. Di ba? Dalawin sasabihin nila example, ako ang pinakamarami nabigay dito. Eh saan ba pupunta yung binigay mo? Sa'yo din naman. So in, 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 kung, kung mag-iisip ka lang, wala naman talaga siyang binigay. Why? Because they're saying that the money of the church, the people don't have to know what's happening. It's up, it's, it's up to the pastor. So para ba nagbibigay lang ako sa sarili kung kinuha ko sa bulsa kung nilagay ko lang sa kabila? Yun lang ang nangyayari. But they're not really giving anything. They're not even giving their effort. What, 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 what they want is to take from these people. What they want is to devour these people. Not only that, but they exalt. Sabi dito, sabi dito sa verse, um, For you suffer if a man bring into bondage, devour you. If a man take of you, if a man exalt himself. Sabi niya, tinitiis niyo itong mga tao na mapuri, na mapagmataas, na mapagyabang. Diba sabi ni Paul, you suffer. You, tinitiis niyo sila. Ah, hinahayaan yung gawin nila yan. Na, na kayo ay ikulong sa kanilang authority, na kayo ay kunan, na kayo ay uh, 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 pagsamantalahan, okay, using the word of God, at pagyabangan. Yun ang, gina, yun ang nangyayari sa inyo. Nandiyon, pinalaya kayo ng Panginoon sa kasalanan, pumasok kayo sa isang simbahan, hahayaan nyo lang yabangan kayo ng tao. They, because these false ministers love exalting themselves. They, wala silang business exalting God. Wala silang pakinabang dun eh. May pakinabang sila to always exalt themselves. These are ministers who always remind you of their credentials. They always remind you, hey, I am like this. I am like that. So if you're not gonna listen to me, you're gonna be in trouble. Lagi ka nilang pinapaalalahan, hoy, hindi mo ba alak kung sino ako? Lagi nilang ini, pina, tinataas yung authority nila, yung office nila. Okay? Not because of God, but because of themselves. Kaya nila, meron akong kilalang pastor, magpipreach. Boom preach niya, credentials niya eh. Para, kukunin mo yung, kukuha ka magno-notes ka, gawa ka na lang ng airplane. Wala, wala ka masusulat eh. Masusulat mo lang doon kung yung mga DDDD doctor, doctorate niya. Pero, babasa siya ng Bible, sasabihin niya yung credentials niya. Ah, gagabitin niya pa si Paul, si Paul nga eh. Eh, makikita niyo mga mamaya, mga credentials ni Paul, yung kanyang suffering for Christ. Yun ang credentials. Hindi niya sinabi yung galing ko magsalita. Hindi niya sinabi itong mga bagay na na-achieve niya. Sinabi niya kung ano yung mga naranasan ko para sa kalwalatian ni Kristo. Yun ang kanyang credentials. It's completely different from these people. They exalt themselves. We're good speakers. We know the Bible. You better listen to us. Okay? Sabi ni Paul, you are suffering them. Hihayaan niyo silang gawin sa inyo yan. You are God's church. You are God's people. And you let these people do this to you. And this is what really hits me. Sabi dito, if a man smite you on the face, Nung pinag-aaralan ko to, siguro ano to, a metaphor. Para bang hindi naman talagang hampasin sa mukha. When I was studying, it's true. Sinasampal talaga sila. Here in Acts chapter 23, verse 2, it says, And the high priest Ananias commanded them that stood by him to smite him on the mouth. During those times, hindi po, uh, hindi po uh, uh, uncommon yung mga leaders, religious leaders na nananakit. Nananampal. Talaga, they strike you on the face. It's not really uncommon. Remember, these are Jews. Okay? Context natin. Jews sila, unsaved sila, at sila ay uh, gusto lang nila makinabang sa church na, ay mga, na mga hentil. Remember, sa kanilang mga mata, kayong mga hentil, aso kayo. Wala kayo. Nakikisali lang kayo sa religion namin, sa faith namin. So now, since... Sa tingin nyo, mas may alam kami kasi hudyo kami, nakikisali lang kayo sa religion namin. Sa tingin nyo, mas may mas, sa tingin sa tingin nyo, mas may alam kami. Gagamitin namin ito ngayon. Kasi bilib na kayo sa amin eh. Hudyo kami, magaling kami, bilib na kayo ngayon. Hindi malayo na kung you are suffering them to do all these things, hindi malayo na hahayaan mo rin silang saktan kanila physically. Ayaw ko sa inyo kung meron meron po tayong mga na, na meron po mga 
kilala pa sa kinikwento nga ni Daddy kahit buntis papaluin. Di ba? Na ang daling manakit. Uh, na I, although, although I experienced that, and kahit naman sa seminary may spanking, and I accept that. Kasi pumasok sa seminary talagang uh, um, may spanking. Although I myself, kung magkaroon man ako ng seminary someday, hindi ako mamamalo. But I respect what, what that pastor did. Kasi Bible student nga naman kami, tumakas kami sa church, nagdota kami. Hindi paluin, sabi niya. Hindi palo kami sa puwet. Ang palo sa ano, kita, la, kita, kita ng mga worker. But ang ibig sabihin nito, yung masyado na silang mapang-abuso na kahit physically sasaktan ka nila. Now, imagine kung gaano ka brainwash itong mga tao na to para hayaan nilang saktan sila. Gaano kayo ka brain, gaano anong kailangan kong gawin dito? Anong klasing brainwashing ang kailangan kong gawin sa inyo para payagan niyo ako na lapit kay isa-isa dito sa paling ko kayo. And you suffer it. Hayaan niyo lang. Ano this ganito kagaling itong mga taong to. Hindi sila pipitsuging mangloloko. They are really professional con men. I'm a Jew. I know better. I am a Hebrew. Makabasa natin later in verse number 22. I am a Hebrew. I am an Israelite. I know better. Magaling ako magsalita. Knowledgeable ako sa Bible. You better listen to me. You don't have to look at your Bible. Just listen to me. Give me your money. Do this. Do that. Ayaw mo sundin. Pak! Yari ka. Now, this is what's happening. Kaya si Paul, kailangan ko nang sabayan kasi nakakaawa naman kayo. You suffer these people. Pinagyayabangan kayo. Pineparahan kayo. Sinasaktan pa kayo. Mga kapatid, we are so blessed to see this warning from the Word of God. Now, if you see this kind of things in a minister, they're not real ministers of God. A real minister of God will not put you into bondage. A real minister of God will not take off you or devour you. A real minister of God doesn't exalt himself. A real minister of God especially does not hurt you physically. Okay? Again, these are in, in, uh, maraming, uh, uh, we can go deep into hurting physically, but then, Ibig sabihin nito, abuse. Okay? These, these people are abusing, abusing these uh, uh, men, men of God. Now, another, uh, another dose of sarcasm here. Sabi niya dito sa verse number 21. I speak as concerning reproach, as though we had been weak. Para bang sinasabi ni Paul, ah, pasensya na, mahina kasi ako, hindi ko kayang gawin sa inyo yung mga yan. Guilty, hindi ako ganyan. Hindi ko kayo kayang pagsamantalahan. Hindi ko kayo kayang kuhanan ng pera. Hindi ko kayo kayang ikulong sa authority ko. Hindi ko kayo kayang saktan. Because I'm weak. Di ba ang, 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 ang bansag sa kanya, mahina ka eh. Ibig sabihin nila, sa mahina ka, hindi mo kami kayang sampalin, mahina ka. Hindi mo kami kayang paglaba, ba? hindi mo kami kayang ikulong sa authority mo, mahina ka. You're weak, Paul. Kaya sabi niya, okay, uh, pasensya na. Ibig sabihin nyo ba ng malakas ay yung mga taong pinagsasamantalahan kayo? Ibig sabihin nyo ba ng malakas yung mga taong mayabang? Ibig sabihin nyo malakas yung mga taong kaya ko yung saktan o sige kung yan lang din pala yung malakas I am weak I cannot do that to you That's what the Apostle Paul says I am too weak to do that Kaya nga sabi niya verse number 22 says here uh, Are they Hebrews? So am I Are they Israelites? So am I Now makita natin dito in verse 22 to context na ang mga kalaban ni Paul dito are Jews These people who really think that they're the authority when it comes to the Word of God. Now, mga kapatid, when, I don't know where, where which church you've been before. I don't know where, uh, kung saan na kayo mga naging member. But you should praise the Lord if you were a part of a, of a minister dati na hindi naman talaga tunay na minister ng Panginoon. And it's sad. Malasab, masasabi ko po with all uh, uh, confidence na marami na po sa ta- panahon natin are false ministers of Christ. Even though they're under the title Baptist, Even though they're under the title na mga kilalang pastor, they are not really true ministers. Compare their lives to the life of the true ministers of God in the Bible. It's so far. Hindi po natin makukumpara. Why? Because the ministers of God in the Bible, even through, through history, you see that they are people who are willing to give their lives to the church. Hindi po sila yung mga tao na kinukuha yung simbahan para maging pakinabang sa sarili nila. Kaya nga po kung may pastor na puro pakabig, 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 they're not true ministers of Christ. Di ba? Uh, the Bible says we are ministers of God. Not, your minis- not ministers for you. Uh, we're servants of God. We're, you're, we are not your servants. Di ba? Although, half truth, pero pakabig pa rin sa kanila. Okay, so now, uh, Paul warns us of, of, Paul warns them or, or told them sarcastically, I might say, kung ano ba yung ginagawa sa inyo ng mga false ministers. Ngayon, sabi ni Paul, ako naman, Ayan yung credentials nila para sa inyo, ha? Na may galing sila, nananakit sila, ganyan ang ginagawa nila para sa inyo. Ito ngayon ang credentials ko. Makinigay sa akin. Okay? 
Oh, but before that, pinagbalik tayo pala. Let's go to number three first. What were the problem with these Corinthian people? Bakit nga ba naman nila hinayaan? Kasi I think this is something that is hindi to one click. Eh. Itong brainwashing na to, it goes over time. Now, what were what was their problem? I believe that the reason why hinayaan nila mangyari sa kanito because they're too man-centered. Masado silang nakafocus sa tao sa ministry. And this is our this is a, this is a problem that we can easily fall into. Pag naging man-centered po tayo. Pagka po ang focus natin sa ministry ay tao. Pagka nagsimula ka pumunta sa church para sa tao. Pag nagsimula kang makinig ng Bible para sa tao. Pag nagsimula kang pumili ng makikinggan mo, that means you're now man-centered. Lahat po na naging problema ng abuso sa simbahan ng mga ministers of God, pastors na naabuso ang mga ang mga ang, ang simbahan dahil sila ay man-centered. Dahil bilib na bilib sila sa tao, dahahayaan nila yung tao gawin kahit anong gusto nilang gawin. Imagine that isang pastor napakayaman, uh, na napakaganda ng buhay, uh, uh, merong bahay, may kotse, na pag-aaral ang kanyang mga anak perfectly, but yung kanyang mga worker naghihirap. Walang pang-aral ang kanilang mga anak. But they give their lives fully into the ministry, thinking that they're serving the Lord when they're just following the uh, the selfish desires of that pastor. They're too man-centered. Kasi kung hindi ka naman bilib sa tao, hindi mo naman hayaang abusuhin ka. Kung wala ka yung bilib sa tao, hindi mo hayaang sampaling ka. Di ba? Suntukin mo rin. Hindi naman siguro, hindi naman siguro bawal bumawi ng sampal. But kaya nila ginagawa yan because they're man-centered. Focus po sila sa tao. Yeah, let's let's read it here. First Corinthians, same people, chapter three, verse two. Start from two. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it. Neither uh, yet now are you able. We see here that pagka man-centered ka, yung paglago mo maapektuhan. Kasi hindi ka na nakafocus sa Bible. We can only grow by the Word of God. Pero pagka nandito ka para pakinggan ng tao, you're not gonna grow. Never going to grow. Uh, sabi niya dito, uh, For ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, and are ye not, uh, ye not carnal and walk as men? Yung mga tao pong man-centered ang kanilang kaisipan, they are carnal people. They're not really spiritual people. For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? Kaya nga po hindi maganda yung pagbahagi, yung, yung, yung uh, uh, pag dito, preference. Kaya sabi nung isa, ay Toronto ako, ay ito Warriors ako. Kaya dapat pangit po 'yun. Kung meron man lang, kung meron man kayong pusta sa ganyan, kalimutan niyo na 'yon. Ire mag una magrepent kayo na nagpili-pili kayo, isang simbahan lang kayo, naghiwalay pa kayo. Tas may pusta pa. Masaka po 'yun. Hindi po maganda 'yun, kapatid, ha? Are you not carnal? Sabi po, 'di ba? 'Di ba? Oh. Who then is Paul? And who is Apollos? But ministers by whom ye believe, even as the Lord gave to every man. Diba? Sabi niya, nagpipili kayo na meron kayong preference. Sino ba itong mga to? Binigay lang naman sa inyo para sa inyong kapakanan. Diba? Uh, I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. Okay? Uh, so then neither is he that planteth anything. Diba? Neither he that watereth. But God that give it the increase. Sabi niya, sino, ano ba namang kwenta nung nagtanim? Anong kwenta nung nagdilig? Ang meron lang kwenta yung nagbigay ng increase. Yun ang sinabi ni Paul. These people are really man-centered. They're even choosing who they will listen to when they preach. Di ba? I am of Paul, I am of, uh, of Paul. No? Sabi niya, sino ba naman kami? Ginamit lang naman kami. Diyos ma lang ang naglagay sa amin dito. Wala kami. Ang meron lang uh, deserve ng inyong praise ay yung nagbibigay ng increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one. Pinag-aaway nyo pa. We're just one. We have one goal. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. Para ba, hindi pa naman kayong mga karnal. Na isang body na lang tayo. Isa na lang ang goal natin. Pinagkakabaha-bahagi nyo pa. Because you're so man-centered. Why? Uh, let's skip to verse number 21. There, where, where, therefore, let no man glory in men. For all things are yours. Okay? Mga pastor, mga preachers, they're here for you. All of us are here for you. Wala po dito nagko-contest. Okay? Uh, whether Paul, or Apollos, or Cephas, or the world, or life, or death, or things present, or things to come, all are yours. God is willing to give all of this to you. Why? Mahal niya kayo. Kaya nga sabi, pero God, again, He, he goes back in verse 23 and says, 
and ye are Christ, and all goes back to what? And Christ is God's. Kaya nga, um, basically, sinasabi ni Paul, notice here that he's emphasizing na everything is still about God. Don't make it about men. Okay, wag ka pumili. Kay Paul ako, kay Cephas ako, kay Apollos ako, wag ka pumili. All of these things should just point to God. Kaya kung yun ang focus mo, wala kang pakialam kung, kung, kung sino yung nagpipreach as long as he's preaching the Word of God. Kaya kung Diyos ang focus mo, wala kang, wala kang problema kung ano man ang programa ng simbahan as long as yung programa ay para sa Panginoon. Kaya kung Diyos ang focus mo, wala kang problema kung saan kang outreach pupunta as long as yung outreach na yun is, doing, uh, is being held for the glory of God. Kung ang focus mo ay Diyos lang, kapatid, hindi ka nga madaling matisod. Hindi ka madaling madiscourage. Hindi ka madaling masidetrack. Why? Focus mo, Panginoon eh. But these people, they're so man-centered na napaka, na dali nilang lokohin. Kung bilib ka na, wala na. Wala na, nabil, napabilib ka na eh. Kaya nga yung mga mahilig bumilib sa mga artista, kung anong ginagawa nun, gagayahin nyo. ba? Kaya nga ako, warriors ako eh. Kasi, hindi nagmumura yan sila. Curry? Yun, para hindi mo sila gayahin, pero yun sila kaway. Mura lang mura yan sa court. Ay, pero po kung maririnig nyo po yun, nagmumura po yun. Hindi po magandang ano yun. Kaya dapat wires tayong lahat. Okay. So, yung, so, kaya nga, kung ano yung, kung sino ka believe, kung kanino ka nagpa-follow, dun ka, dun ka madali may in bondage. And what better bondage can we be in than we're, we're bondage to the will of God? Kaya nga po, dapat dun po tayo mag-focus. Make God the focus of your ministry and your worship, as I, I might add. Make God the focus of that. Now, going back, Medyo pinuto lang natin ng konti. Let's go to the true minister of Christ. So, so, so Paul says, eto yung mga false ministers, yan ang kanilang credentials, now here is mine. Ano ba yung tunay ni minister ng Panginoon? Ano ba yung tunay na tao na, 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 na tinawag ng Panginoon to take care of his flock? Now, unang-unang kailangan natin ma-realize ma- dito. Verse number 23. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool, I am more. Now, look at the word minister. The word minister here means Ah, uh, nawala ang aking notes. Okay, diaconos, meaning an attendant. That is generally a waiter or a servant. Yun pa lang. Actually, pwede nang tumigil si Paul dyan eh. Nung sinabi niya itong word na minister na ito, meaning servants. Now, going back to these false ministers, nothing in them screams servant. But all about Paul screams servant. So sabi ni, ni, ni Paul, are they ministers? Are they servants? Okay? I speak as a fool, I am more. We forget, always forget that God's ministers are the servants of the church. Lagi po natin malalahan ninyo. Kaya, pagka, kahit sino po sa aming mga preachers dito or ating pastor ay nagsimula na or tumigil na na paglingkuran ng simbahan, that is the time that members have to step in and put us back down to earth. Kaya nga po dapat, that is the part of the members. You only, you all, you're only entitled to listen to us as long as we are speaking the Word of God. You're only entitled to obey us as long as what we're doing is for the betterment of this church. But kung hindi na po doon, labas na po sa authority namin, wala na po kayong karapatan sundin yun. Okay? That is, that is a true minister. They're servants of the body of Christ. Kaya nung sinabi niya, Bante na, I'm not your servant, that's wrong. And he has to repent of that. Okay? And that's why uh, 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 people are now, uh, Paul is saying that, are they ministers? Are they your servants? I am more. Now, ano ba yung tunay na minister ng, 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 ng Panginoon? Verse 23, are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool, I am more. Why? In labors, more abundant. I am a true minister of Christ. Why? Because I labor. Hindi ako tamad. Kaya nga po, hindi po, wala, there's no such thing as a lazy minister of God. Now, Paul is now uh, enumerating his credentials. Remember, ito yung credential ko. Ha? Why am I worthy to be called a minister? Because I labor. Nag pa ako. I labor. Hindi po ako tamad. Wala pong minister ng Panginoon na tamad. And we know that the minister of God, people who are standing behind the pulpit, ang una po namin job description is to feed the people. Amen. To preach the word of God. Kaya po kami, kung tamad, mag-prepare ng ipapakain, we're not true ministers of God. Kaya nga po, ang tunay na ministers, tunay na pastor, tunay na preacher, ay masipag mag-aral ng salitaan ng Panginoon. And I speak here to people, especially uh, especially to people who are preaching the word of God. Bawal po ang tamad. 
Hindi po tayo dapat mawalan ng gana mag-aral ng salita ng Panginoon. If we really are called to be ministers of Christ, we are going to have that constant desire to know more, to know more, to prepare it, to feed the people. Okay? Kaya nga sabi ni, 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 ni Paul, I'm a minister of God. Why? Because I work hard. Okay? I'm not lazy. Okay? Compared to these people, all they want is uh, kung ano yung mabuti sa kanila, but I work hard. Now, look, look at how, dif- how different yung, yung, yung kanilang credentials sa credentials ni Apostle Paul. Now, uh, kaya nga po, sab- and, 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 and I don't say this to, meron pala akong panyo, and I, and I don't say this to uh, exalt myself, but it's always in my heart na hanggat, hanggat marami akong time na may free para sa sarili ko sa pag ng Panginoon, ng salita ng Panginoon, I will take it. Kaya nga, kahit na nagagalit na sa akin si Milke, Ay, Milka, bitawan ko na yung hapon ko. I told her. Because I have to do something. In, although mahal ko po yung trabaho ko, mga kapatid, mahal na mahal ko po yung trabaho ko. Talagang na, naiiyak ako pag <laughs> noimiss ko yung mga studyante ko sa grade 3. Pero mahal na mahal ko po yung trabaho ko. But I love the, studying the Word of God more. And I don't know if this is correct o kung mali ito. But every, every hour I spend na alam ko na hindi naman talaga yun ang gusto kong gawin na mahirap. Mahirap po na napatuloy na mag-labor sa gagawin yung But I know that that's what I have to do. Pero kaya nga blessing yung sound school na nag-open. And they gave me a few hours there na medyo maayos naman yung bayad ko. Sabi ko, ito na yung siguro yung kasagutan ng Panginoon. So I let go of that uh, uh, ng, ng ha- panghapon ko so I can spend time ano yun, playing Mobile Legends. Studying the Word of God. Nagkamali ako ng ano. Joke lang po. Ano lang yun? Ah, pastime lang yun. Okay? Studying the Word of God. Because kailangan po kasi minsan nakakahiya pag mag-preach tayo, mali. Nakahiya po. Kasi trabaho natin na mag-preach ng tama. Although walang perfect po na nag-preach dito, lahat po kami nagkakamalit, nagkakamalit. And praise God, nakakapag-correct po namin ng isa't isa. But as much as possible, we make sure that what we preach is correct and according to the Word of God. Okay? And we can only do that if we are not lazy studying the Word of God. Kaya nga po mga kapatid, pag ang minister ng Panginoon, tinatamad na mag-aral, eh hindi na po talaga dapat pakinggan. Okay? Kasi ang authority po namin, Word of God lang, wala na. Kaya kung hindi na po kami dito na sasalita, nakikwento na lang kami, nagpapatawan na lang kami, kung ano-ano na lang gimmick ginagawa namin, hindi na po kami nagpipreach nag entertain na lang po kami. But as long as we're talking about the Word of God, hey, you have all the right to remain silent. Pero mag-amen kayo. To listen to us. Okay? To listen to the Word of God. So, medyo, na, medyo nawala tuloy ako. Okay? Now, uh, a minister of God works hard than most. Okay? Do you expect that ministers of God works harder than other people? Okay? Sabi niya dito, I am, I am in labors more, in stripes above measure, in prisons more often, in deaths oft, of the Jews five times receive I 40, 40 stripes save one. We can see here that a minister of God, a true minister of God like Paul, is willing to suffer for him. Kabaliktaran po ng pakinabang ang hanap, ang tunay na minister ng Panginoon ay handa na mag-suffer para sa kanya. Hindi po circumstantia ang nagdidictate kung kami magpapatuloy na maging minister ng Panginoon. Kung mahirap na po ang circumstantia, okay lang. Kasi we are we should we're supposed to be true ministers of God. Compare Paul's circumstance sa circumstance po namin. Ang layo. 'Di ba? Si Paul madalas walang tulugan. Si Paul madalas hinahanap para patayin. Si Paul madalas nakukulong. Si Paul madalas walang makain, walang tulog. Pero po kami, compare our self. Lahat tayo uh, in that matter, meron tayong nauuwian para matulugan. Meron tayong nakakain. Marami tayong resources. Wala na po tayong dahilan kung bakit hindi tayo mag-aaral ng salita ng Panginoon. Wala na po tayong dahilan kung bakit hindi natin ibibigay ang, ang, ang ating buhay sa Panginoon. Why? We have so much blessings. Kaso nga lang po, minsan yung blessing na yun ang nag-take pa ng time natin sa Word of God. Marami tayong pera, uh, bakasyon, bakasyon, bakasyon. Walang masama mag-bakasyon, pero kung puro bakasyon na lang ang ginawa mo, yun ang masama. Hindi po ba? Kaya nga po, sabi niya dito, of the Jews, Five times receive I 40 stripes, save one. Diba? So, if sabihin 39. Five times. Yung nangyari kay Kristo, na 39 uh, times din siyang hinampas, oh, uh, Paul experienced it five times. Now, the reason why, bakit 39 times? In, here in Deuteronomy chapter 25, verse 3, 40, 40 stripes he may give him and not exceed. Lest if he should exceed and beat him above this, 
with many stripes, then thy brother should seem vile unto thee. Ito yung batas nun. 40 times mo lang silang pwedeng hampasin. Hindi pwedeng 41. Mali ka na nun. Kaya ang ginagawa nila during this time ni Paul, 39 lang. In case na magkamali yung nagbibilang. At least, wala silang pananagutan. 39 lang yan. Kulang pa nga ng isa. So kung sumobra man ng isa, sakto pa. Okay, kaya yun ang ginagawa nila kay Paul. 39 times he was... And sabi dito, I, I read how, how they are striking them. Two hands of the criminal are bound to a post. And then the servant of the synagogue either pulls or tears off his clothes till he leaves his breast and shoulders bare. A stone or block is placed behind him on which the servant stands. He holds in his hands a scourge made of leather divide into, divided into four tails. He who scourges lays one third on the criminal's breast, another third on his right shoulder, and another on his left. The man who receives the punishment is neither sitting nor standing, but all the while stooping. And the man and the man smites with all his strength with one hand. That's how that's what they're doing to these people. To Paul, five times niya po ito naranasan. A true minister of Christ, sinasabi niya sa mga tao dito, a true minister of Christ is willing to be to suffer for him. Para bang unti-unti nang pinapakita ni Paul sa kanila, hey, hindi mo man lang mako-compare ang buhay ko sa buhay ng mga yan. Na, na mga bilib na bilib ko sa kanila, gustong-gusto niyo silang pakinggan, ni ang layo ng buhay nila sa buhay ko. Why well, I'm a true minister of Christ because nagsisikap ako and I'm willing to suffer for Christ. And I'm continuing kahit na uh, nangyayari sa akin to. Verse 25, sabi niya, thrice was I beaten with rods, once was I stoned, thrice I suffered shipwreck, a night and a day I have been in the deep. Now, Paul was one of the most traveled person during those times. Lagi siyang nagbabiyahe, pero lagi din may nangyayari sa kanyang biyahe, aksidente. Verse 26, In journeyings often, in perils or in danger of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. Mga kapatid, it's not to be compared sa ating sitwasyon ngayon. But he is continuing because he is a true minister of Christ. Okay? And in that matter, we're all ministers of Christ. We're in one way ministering for the glory of the Lord. Kaya nga, wag po tayo magreklamo. Kaya nga, kagabi nga, pinos ko, habang pinag-aaralan ko ito, nagutom ako. Meron akong pagkain na makakain. Di ba? Uh, kung ano man niya, kahit na chichirya pa yan, meron kang kape na matitimpla. Pero si Paul, wala. Minsan nga, nasa lamig siya. Wala siyang, kail- wala siyang matista yan. But he continues. Kaya nga po, ang hirap na lang isipin, minsan may gana pa tayong magreklamo. Ang dami po nating blessing. Sabi ko nga, nawala na. Ay, nawala na ako ng two hours dyan. Nandiyan naman si, si, nandiyan naman si Daddy. Nandiyan naman ang Panginoon. Patuloy na nagsusupply ng pangangailangan. Di ba? Hindi pwede magreklamo. Kasi lagi pong may blessings. And all of these things ginagamit ng Panginoon Para, patuloy, para tulungan tayo magpatuloy. Kaya salamat po sa Panginoon. Talaga, talaga salamat po sa Panginoon. Okay? Nawala na naman ako. Kaya pag lumalabas ka talaga sa Bible, hindi na dapat eh. Okay? Uh, right. Now, yet, in our time, minsan nagtataka pa tayo pagka nagsasuffer tayo when this is what should, we should expect. Okay? Kaya nga sabi ni Paul, una, I'm a minister of God because I work hard. A minister of God because I'm willing to suffer. I'm a minister of God, verse number 28. Beside those things that are without, uh, besides pa sa mga ito, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. Who is weak, and I am not weak. Who is offended, and I burn not. Now, a minister of God has a great burden for the people of God. Kaya sabi niya, besides all these things na nararanasan ko, Iba pa yung constant na pag-iisip ko sa inyo and my burden for you. Imagine, isang pastor, ganito ang church na hinahawakan mo katulad ng mga Corinth. It will take all your effort, all your time, only to think and pray for them. But, hindi lang isang church po ang ini- binabanggit ni Paul. Remember his apostle to the Gentiles, ang dami niyang simbahan na in his start. All of these things are in his mind. All of these people are in his heart. All of these people are a burden sa kanya. Kaya, despite all these physical things na naranasan ko, iba pa yung burden ko sa inyo. Isa pa ito, sabi ni Paul. But, because I'm a minister of God, hindi ko tatanggalin itong burden, itong itong nararamdaman ko para sa inyo because all I want is for you to be uh, uh, to live lives that are glorifying to the Lord. Kaya nga ako binigay ng Panginoon. First Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11, and he gave some apostles 
and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the, uh, of the body of Christ. Ito yung sinasabi ni Paul. Kaya ako nandito to edify you, to teach you, to, to, to be a blessing to you. Hindi ko, I will not let go of that. Paul has all the reason to stop ministering to these Corinthian people. He has all the reason. Nandiyan pa yung Philippine, nandiyan pa yung Ephesus. Focus na lang ako sa mga to, sumusunod to eh. But, since I'm a great, uh, I'm a true minister of, minister of God, patuloy akong magmi-minister sa inyo. This burden, I will not let go of that. Sabi niya ver- in verse 12, Ano daw yung ministry nila for the perfecting of the saints, edifying of the body of Christ, and gang, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Kaya nga po mga kapatid, walang perfect church. Why? Because kaya nga tayo may mga leaders para patuloy tayo mag-improve. Someday, we will not be perfect now. Kaya nga po, mahirap po maghanap ng perfect church. Kaya nga, may pastor, kaya nga may word of God, kaya nga may preaching, kaya nga may teaching para patuloy natin naayos yung ating mga mali. Yun yung, that's, that's, that, kaya nga sabi, till we all come. Okay, hanggang dumating tayo sa time na there's no such thing as a perfect church. Perfect church. Uh, verse number 30. Okay, not only is the minister of God labor, does, he's not lazy, he labors, he's, he's willing to suffer, he has a great burden for the people of God. Kaya nga po, we praise God if we have a pastor or, or preacher so as burden for the people of God. And verse number 30, if I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern my infirmities. A minister of God glorifies God in every circumstance. Hindi po mareklamo. Okay, even in the, just the next chapter, sabi niya in verse 9, chapter 12, verse 9, And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. What kind of minister is Paul? Na kahit na infirmities, weakness, a lot of these things na naranasan niya, and pasaway pa ang mga miyembro, kaya niya pa rin papurihan ng Panginoon. And this is something that's easy to say, na mahirap ipamuhay. Madali pong basahin, madaling sabihin, madaling mag-amen dito. But it's really hard to live it out in our lives. Mahirap pong gawin. Mas madaling magreklamo pag mahirap ang buhay. Mas madaling magreklamo pag may sakit ka. Mas madaling magreklamo pag may pagpasaway ang mga membro. But the, a true minister of Christ will always glory in the Lord. We we'll always glorify the Lord in any circumstance. Kaya mga kapatid, what kind of minister do you think we have? What kind of ministers do you think you have? You don't have perfect ministers, that is a given. You're not, we are not a perfect church, that is a given. But we can all work together in order to come into that unity of the faith. And someday, uh, we will be presented to Christ, a pure uh, a body of Christ. Kaya nga po mga kapatid, all Paul is doing here is, in, uh, is, he has only one goal in mind. May ayos pa naman sana ang simbahan na ito. Okay? I can just not write to them. Malapit na rin naman si, uh, malapit na rin naman alam naman ni Paul na hindi na rin magtatagal ang buhay niya. Aasahin pa ba niya yung yung kanyang panahon sa mga gantong klasing tao? Sa mga tao na tinuruan mo na, binigyan mo na ng word of God, lahat na tinuro mo sa kanila, ang ang nangyari pa nagpauto sa mga Hudyo. Tapos Kinay question ka pa ngayon. Tapos siya pa ngayon ang nagmumukhang masama. Siya pa ngayon ang mahina. But as as I have said, which is such a blessing na meron tayong word of God. Nakita natin kung ano yung anong klasing mga ministers ang nilalagay ng Panginoon sa simbahan. At nalalaman natin kung anong klasing ministers ang dapat natin expect sa mga taong tumatayo dito sa likod ng, pul- ng, ng pulpito. At nalalaman natin kung paano natin tutulungan ng set isa na maabot yung ganong klasing, ganong klasing simbahan. Mga kapatid, that's why the, I believe that this, this book of 2 Corinthians, although we're, we're down to the last two chapters here, this is a great lesson for us kasi hindi po tayo, hindi po natin pwedeng sabihin na hindi tayo magiging ganito. You know, we're just one uh, we're just one wrong decision away from being a church na hindi na po mag-glorify ng Panginoon. But we have to be careful. Huwag po natin lagay lahat ng burden na yon sa mga preachers or sa pastor. We all have to carry that burden. 
We all have to know what we have to do. We all have to know the Bible. Why? Para po sabay-sabay nating bantayan ang purity of this church. Purity of the doctrine, purity of the teachings here, purity of the people that are here. Not, again, purity doesn't mean being sinless, but it means that lahat tayo in one mind, in one in one goal, na papupurihan natin ang gagawin natin kung ano ang tama. And as we as I come to a close uh, uh, to, uh, the, in this message, we can see here that uh, we, we, are, we have been put in the church. We, we, we heard the, in this church, we heard the uh, uh, testimony of Shine and Sister Jubel. Ang hirap po na, hindi ko po alam, hindi ko makarelate ngayon sa inyong naramdaman. Malayo kayo sa family. Okay, hati, di ba? No one is going to blame you if you buy a ticket now, ride a plane and go back to the Philippines. No one's gonna blame you. Why? May pamilya kayo eh. Right? There's that. But, nilagay tayo ng Panginoon dito for a purpose. And as we are here, habang nandito po tayo, habang tayo nag-aaral at tututo sabay-sabay, ang gawin po natin, makiisa tayo. Maki, ma, 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 gawin po natin kung ano yung dapat natin gawin dito. Although yung puso natin nandun, yung mind natin may, may be somewhere else, but we, are not, we, are, we should pray to the Lord na hindi po kami magiging pabigat while we are here. You know, kapatid, uh, may derechahan lang naman lagi yung, yung, yung salita dito sa pulpit nito. Meron po dito na may, may times na dumadaan sa buhay natin, nagiging pabigat tayo eh. Pasaway. Ayaw sumunod. Ayaw makiisa. At it, why, why? Bakit po? Kaya nga po sabi ko, praise the Lord, pinipurge niya ang kanyang simbaan. Inaalis niya yung mga tao na alam niya na talaga hindi na makikiisa. Di ba? Ano mo yung nangyari kay Ananias and Sapphira? They lied. They're defiling, defiling the church of God. They died. I'm not saying God's gonna kill you, but all I'm saying is God takes His church seriously. You should take God's church seriously. Kaya nga po mga kapatid, while we're here, let's do it. Take it seriously. Gawin po natin ng tama. Makiisa po tayo so that we will not be a burden like these people at Corinth. Pero tayo yung magiging like, like the people at Philippi helping the ministers and, and together glorifying the Lord. So, uh, the true ministers of Christ. And I hope and I pray sa amin po mga nagpipreach dito, we're going to be like this and that you're going to glorify God. And, and thank the Lord if we are going to have these kinds of ministers. Let's all stand and let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for... Uh